The gospel text of today is taken from the gospel of Mark chapter 3 verses 22 to 30. In the gospel of Mark, the first half up to chapter 8 is situated in Galilee. And Galilee is a place where Jesus is accepted except in his hometown. Whenever outsiders create trouble for Jesus in Galilee, they come from Jerusalem. And that is why in chapter 3 verse 22, Mark will say, the people who came from Jerusalem to Galilee made this allegation against Jesus. And what is the allegation that they make? The allegation is that Jesus gets his power to cast out demons from the prince of demons whom they call Beelzebul. And Jesus listens to this allegation which is absurd and responds in a very logical manner. And the logical manner is this. If Jesus is getting his power from the prince of demons, then why would he cast the demons out? It would be better for him if he let the demons remain because the prince of demons is giving him the power. So very clearly, if he is casting the demons out, he cannot be on the side of Beelzebul. He cannot be on the side of the prince of demons, but gets his power from God. And then Jesus goes on to further explain how the demon is a strong person. The demon can take hold of a person. The demon can enter deep into a person's psyche, the person's heart, the person's mind. And the person is unable to look beyond him or herself. That is the kind of possession which Jesus has come to destroy by the kind of person that he is. And he calls himself the stronger man. It is only when the stronger man comes that he can bind up this strong man who is Beelzebul, the prince of demons, and cast him out. And then Jesus makes a statement which is a very poignant statement, a very sad statement which each one of us is called to reflect on. And the statement is this. Every sin against anyone, even against Jesus himself, Jesus says here, will be forgiven. But whoever blasphemes against the Holy Spirit can never be forgiven. He or she is guilty of an eternal sin. Mark explains what this sin means in his gospel when he says, this was because they said he has an evil spirit in him. So what is this sin against the Holy Spirit? First, the sin against the Holy Spirit is not a particular action. It is not even a group of actions. The sin against the Holy Spirit is an attitude. And that attitude is an attitude which closes one's mind and heart to the revelation which God makes. A closed attitude which does not allow God to function, which does not allow God to work within me, is an attitude that is against the Holy Spirit. And the reason why it is against the Holy Spirit, because God will never enforce his will. Because God will never compel a person to do what God wants. God always invites. God always beckons. God always calls. If my mind and my heart is closed, then I cannot hear that call. And correspondingly, I cannot respond to the call. And if I do not respond to the call, I cannot be transformed by the Lord. I will remain the same sinful person that I am. So the sin against the Holy Spirit is not 
punishment which God will impose on anyone. It is a punishment I impose on myself when I close my mind and my heart. Today, the sin against the Holy Spirit is to no longer believe that the Holy Spirit can transform me. Is to become so nervous and sad about myself is to become so inward looking about myself, is to become so low in my own self-esteem and think that I am beyond redemption. No one is beyond redemption. No one is beyond the forgiveness of God. Every one of us is loved. If only we open our hearts to receive that love. Let me not be guilty of the sin against the Holy Spirit, of the attitude of closing my mind and my heart. Let me open it today to the revelation of God's grace wherever God chooses to reveal it.